Hello and shalom. Today is Saturday. I just got back from my family trip in California, or in the Los Angeles area. It was wonderful. I got to meet with my rabbi. He's gonna send me some documents to my Mitchell, South Dakota address. I also got dual uh, citizenship too. So I absolutely love the LA area. Yeah, the, on Tuesday, it was just like the day after I arrived, they started shutting down the libraries, um, public amenities, and maybe the schools um, indefinitely because of this coronavirus hysteria. But that kind of hindered my trip a little bit, but it was well worth it because I needed to see my rabbi with things that are going on in this country as well as the rest of the world. I feel, I feel as a Sephardic Jew that my future is better in Israel than America. So hence, part of making my trip, um, started the process of making Aliyah, which is a Hebrew term for a Jew immigrating to Israel. So right now I live in the United States, in South Dakota. As you can tell, it's cold out here. And uh, there's, I think I counted 44 boxes that needed to be checked off. So I'm down to two. And this is one of the process. The last process will be um, a one-on-one -on -one interview with an Israeli shaliak. So that's the last. And then afterward, I'd be okay and be proven and immigrate to Israel. Now, I one reason why I really like LA is because there were a lot of people. It's a place that feels alive. Yeah, the the traffic, especially the closer you get to the inner city was a lot of cars but to me I don't think it's it wasn't as bad as I thought or what most people thought there's not a lot of honking I mean yeah I'm sure there's like a road rage here and there but I didn't see any of that I didn't experience any of that I definitely didn't feel the vibe yeah there were some crazy drivers that weaved their way in and out of traffic and they would have done the same thing here in Mitchell or even in Sioux Falls they would have gotten ticketed they would have been stopped but in LA, I guess that's that's uh, pretty common. But wow, I walked all over the streets of LA. No, the coronavirus thing does not scare me one bit. I do think it's a biological weapon that's been uh, engineered. Uh, it's very it's, it's very infectious because it's designed to take down people that uh, the makers of the virus feel shouldn't be around. So that's why it's affecting a lot of elderly people and folks whose uh, immunity has been compromised. So the way I feel about it is those that uh, died due to the coronavirus, they were likely going to get very, very sick or perhaps died due to the, uh, you know, your normal seasonal flu or cold or that. But I know uh, coronavirus I don't know if it's really uh, yeah it might have released in Wuhan China but I'm not sure if the Chinese are responsible for it I think those that are responsible for it had an agenda one of them was a population um, deduction now if the Chinese were at fault why would they start in Wuhan and why is it affecting the rest of the globe okay but what I really think is happening is the collapse of the global economy just the world is in debt and here in America it, it really starts with the American domino and when that falls so does the rest because the way the world operates is that oil is the most traded commodity okay multi trillions a lot of money involved not buy, sell, or trade oil unless it's done done in U.S. dollar. Its name, American petrodollar. Now, if a country does go outside of the system, they trade, buy, or sell oil, accepting the other country's currency, or it's done outside of the American dollar. America will either hit them with a sanction, or just flat out go to war with them. That's why America is constantly bloodthirsty, always in a war, and they make up some sort of lie. And since most Americans are gullible and naive, 
they believe in these lies. That's why they don't have a problem with sending, them, sending their sons and daughters to join and fight the war, or they themselves will join and fight the war. So I get they, uh, a lot of them join for a noble cause, but the truth is they are being paid, they are being used, and the U.S. military calls really to uh, protect, preserve, and enforce the U.S. petrodollar. That's part of why here in uh, America, people have such a high standard of living because we're really living a false illusion. What we have in America, we truly and honestly do not deserve. I'll give you a beautiful where I'm walking. I'm around the middle of school, of the neighborhood, around Caldwell, Caldwell Park, here in cold and uh, somewhat miserable South Dakota. I think I only have a few months left before I head out. So, and uh, even if you check out the coronavirus hysteria, what's happening now, it's still going to happen because the foundation of this country, the rest of the world, is failing. America is in huge amount of debt. It's like the war, the false war America had with, laid out on uh, Iraq. It was, a, it was a lie, and America did not even have one penny to fight that war. It was all borrowed money from China. So here, send the troops. They, uh, really, they murder or kill for the petrodollar. And then uh, they come home. They're all traumatized. They think they were heroes, but they still have post-traumatic stress disorder. And a lot of them, <laughs> if they see uh, somebody of Middle Eastern background, they start to act weird. Maybe PTSD starts to hit them. So, and I'm of a Middle Eastern background myself too. And uh, yeah, I've had my weird encounters with people like that. But, uh, you know, did Americans forget that Jesus Christ, the Bible, Christianity, Judaism, churches, synagogues, I believe that there's only one true God, all of originated from the Middle East. It's really a Middle Eastern Jewish entity, and <laughs> there's really nothing American about it. So, <laughs> yet everywhere you go, you see churches, I'm going to turn around, churches, uh, see the Holy Bible everywhere. A lot of Americans profess to be Christians. They believe in Jesus Christ. So, no. Kind of weird. The, most Americans, they, they don't uh, see the world through a uh, Middle Eastern Jewish set of eyes. They see, see things through American eyes. And uh, I think, uh, oh, I'm going to start heading home. Right? And starting to get cold. So, they, they see it through the American set of eyes and uh, this arrogancy, um, pridefulness. It's, uh, I've gotten so used to it. So they see something that they don't think is American. They think it's, it's wrong. Well, uh, you know, the biblical saying, pride comes before the fall. So, when a person, company, business, group, people, organization, you know what not when they fall it's likely they had a lot of pride so there's some biblical roots to that saying pride comes before the fall and look what's happening in america so this is march 21st 2020 um a lot of things have shut down banks are shut down um schools shut down gyms a lot of restaurants um much public state Entities are shut down. I drove through the courthouse. I think that was shut down too. So, yeah, you gotta wonder how long is this going to last? The people that aren't receiving money, income, how long are they gonna last? How much longer are the food on the shelf gonna last when they are bought up and there is no replenishment? You know. When it comes to that case, and you got a large number of people can no longer eat, 
Christmas, nothing to nothing to buy, nothing to eat. It's gonna be one mass hysteria. And people are just gonna go criminal when they can't feed themselves, they can't feed their wives or husband and children and family and relatives and friends and all that. They are going to get desperate. They're gonna do what they need to do to eat and survive and they're just gonna go criminal. They're gonna do things that they normally would never do but desperate times people are gonna get desperate. And uh, I've, uh, I've read testimonies that people have been in a financial economic collapse or been in war. They say that those who panic die first. So I, I do believe there's truth in that but also I think there's uh, some grace and mercy to those that do panic in these situations. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty and you can just sense that there's a lot of fear the people here. It's a, but it's such a contrast. Being around LA, I just feel people are alive. The, I like the atmosphere, the, the vibrant I, I got was amazing, excellent. Here in Mitchell, Mitchell's only about 15,000 people. Home of the world is only Corn Palace. Yeah, it seems like a ghost town, it seems kind of dead. I saw two people jogging today, um, and I saw some kids walking around. Not a whole lot, but majority I think people are just hunkered up, they're scared. The government told them you need to uh, stay home, you need to behave, you need to uh, pledge allegiance to America. <laughs> I don't believe in that nonsense. My allegiance is to God, not over a country. And besides, not hating on America, but you know, biblically, America will not survive the end times. Just Greater Israel will be the only entity to survive in the end. It's the only country people not to partake in the devil and the bestial system. So Greater Israel is of course uh, what's currently Israel along with uh, some of the surrounding uh, Arab countries. Um, I think it's all of Lebanon, all of Syria, parts of Iraq, um, all of Jordan, northern part of Saudi and uh, Egypt down to the Nile. So, that, but, you know, you don't really see a lot of Americans escaping this country. I hear stories, but I personally don't know anybody that's trying to get out of this uh, country, other than myself. So, no, this is just the beginning. It's only going to get worse, but at the same time, you want to prepare yourself, read your Bible, trust God, believe in Yeshua, and it's better that you be on the receiving end the wealth of transfer, not prosperity. Because I have my plans, I made some decisions, I made some moves, not just immigrating to Israel, but other things, and I'm prepared to live in the Holy Land, not just live in the Holy Land, but to be married, have kids, and have my property. Now, being a holy man is expensive, so uh, that's why I have uh, got into a cryptocurrency, gold and silver, in preparation for the blessing. So not only can I be in Israel, but I'll have uh, means to uh, means to afford it. So times like this, nothing better than to trust God. So. Uh, I think I'm gonna end this. Warm up my hands. I'm probably 15 minutes from here. All right. Uh, God bless you. And in Jesus' name, may people find the purpose in life. And that is to praise and worship God. That's what life is about. Relationship. All right. Thanks for listening. Dora Rabba.